Hi, my name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv, and you are listening to Headlines You May Have Missed for Monday, January 15th, 2018. The title of this episode is Pot Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and it gets that title from the first two stories that we're going to talk about here, and the teaser Let's get that teaser out there. We're going to cover pot wars, more pot wars, Skype secure, the great chip forward, the moist barrier broken, explosives from Turkey, Sophia Twitter wars, Russian rail guns, and more on this episode of Headlines that you may have missed. If you're new to the show, what we do here is we... We try and see how many headlines can get, can we get through in the course of a 20-minute period of time. And the 20 minutes begins on the clock. And we are going to begin that clock right now. Our first headline is, U.S. House bill could defund podophobe Sessions efforts. Yes, that's what I'm calling him from now on, a podophobe, which is potophobe, but I'm I'm saying podophobe just to be cute. But you may hear me say potophobe, whatever. Uh, the man is is definitely afraid of the marijuana's. It would it would seem so. Congress may be producing a challenge to podophobe Sessions' assault on marijuana. A new bill has been introduced that would defund any effort by the Justice Department to go after marijuana users and dealers. Once again. The government is seeking to come up with a solution to solve a government problem. Whoa! And this, my friends, is, is what the Longer Leash is all about. And on this daily Thursday, we do the Longer Leash segment. And who knows, maybe this story will be the one that we end up talking about more in depth. We'll see. No, So this is from Marijuana Moment. New congressional bill handcuffs Sessions marijuana enforcement. Well, it will if it actually passes, and let's hope it does. A new congressional bill would effectively prevent U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions from cracking down on people who are following state marijuana laws. Uh, the proposal filled in the U.S. House this past Thursday by Congresswoman Barbara Lee and four co-sponsors. Of course, it would have to be introduced by Barbara Lee. She's... Uh, She's about three sheets beyond crazy, but I, I agree with this bill. It would restrict the Justice Department and other federal agencies from spending money to, quote, detain, prosecute, sentence, or initiate civil, civil proceedings against an individual business or property that is involved in the cultivation, distribution, possession, dispensation, or use of cannabis. And there is a link to the document. If you go to isheadlines.com, you can find all the archives of the show and you'll find this show and you look for the one that is uh, for January 15th. Now, let's get to the second story and this is why this is called Pot, Pot Wars, The Empire Strikes Back because we're starting off with two stories. So Colorado senators warn, senators warn Treasury to back off of marijuana banking. So it appears that there is a showdown happening, and, and you see it's going on between the state governments as well as branches of the federal government over Attorney General Jeff Sessions' well, I'm going to, uh, as I wrote here, unwanted, non-supported, unpopular war on pot. Now, I want to make it very clear. I'm not like a uh, big-time pot advocate. I don't actually smoke weed. I'm, I'm not really all that interested in smoking weed but uh my my reason for wanting people to not be locked up and thrown in cages for selling and or ingesting a plant is that they have committed no act of no 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 coercive act against other individuals so, so leave them a heck alone whether it's a good idea or not a good idea to smoke pot i'm not saying one way or another here i'm only standing up for people not being thrown in cages who have done no one else any direct harm so it seems that most of the united states most of the most of the 
uh, most of the citizens, I'll put that in quotes, are not really for this. And I would say that even the GOP is kind of like, dude, this is a loser, loser, loser issue for us. Please don't do this, Jeffy boy. Please don't do this. So he's getting all kinds of pushback. And he's getting pushback at the national level and the and the uh, the state as well as local levels. So in this case, we're looking at the two U.S. senators from Colorado who are sending a message to the U.S. Treasury to not follow the lead of uh, Potophobe or Potophobe. I like Potophobe. I'm going to stick with it for now. Potophobe Sessions and leave marijuana banking alone. And this is from The Cannabis. Colorado senators tell U.S. Treasury don't touch marijuana banking. U.S. Senators Michael Bennett and Cory Gardner of Colorado have asked the U.S. Treasury to keep in place Obama-era rules that allow banks to serve marijuana companies. A preemptive move that follows last week's surprise decision by the Department of Justice, really by 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 potophobe sessions to rescind its policy that generally left alone from drug enforcement states that have legalized cannabis. Uh, both Bennett and Gardner argued the 2014 rule has been a boon for both safety and industry oversight. The two lockmakers introduced legislation last year that would similarly protect banks that did business with marijuana companies. The guidance has worked to reduce the amount of cash that customers, patients, and businesses must use, they wrote. This has had the effect of increasing public safety and making it easier for the state authorities to undertake their compliance and auditing functions. Now, there you go. There you go. That is the nature of the longer leash and I don't know whether this is what we're going to end up talking on Thursday with uh, Lou Sander on his daily which you can find on uh, well you can find on their YouTube channel here at iState and also the Facebook page uh, of the Liberty Principle because I don't know what's going to happen between now and Thursday but this is a strong contender because this is exactly what is happening with marijuana, with the legalization of marijuana and the pushback from the, the empire under under uh, Darth Sessions or Potophobe Sessions, whatever you want to call them, this, this, this goes to the heart of the nature of the longer leash and how it is that uh, whenever they give you a longer leash, there's always a catch. There's always something else happening on the other side. So it ends up being, well... Maybe it's not as longer a leash as as maybe you imagine that it is, and and maybe we'll get into that on 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 his daily Thursday. Meanwhile, we're going to get off the the pot wars, the Empire Strikes Back, and go to our next headline. And our next headline: This is good news, folks. Good news. Skype to offer end-to-end -end encryption through Snick Signal Protocol. So for millions of Skype users, your calls to others might be a lot more secure thanks to a shift by Skype that will integrate the open source program of Signal Protocol into its platform. The story is from Wire. Skype's rolling out end-to-end -end encryption for hundreds of millions of people. Microsoft announced Thursday that Skype will offer end-to-end -end encryption for audio calls, text, and multimedia messages through a feature called Private Consider Con Conversations. Skype will use the robust open source signal protocol to implement the encryption, which is set up so that only the devices sending and receiving communications in a conversation can hear or view them. Not even the service ser servers they pass through can see the contents of end-to-end -end encrypted messages, assuming both parties are using the same service. Skype is one of the most popular applications in the world, yes, and we're excited that private conversations in Skype will allow more users to take advantage of Signal Protocol's strong encryption properties for secure communications. Signal developer Joshua Lund wrote on Thursday. Now, I haven't scratched into the full details of all the technical ramifications of all this. I would, uh, I would just advise everyone that if you think that this means that somehow your Skype conversation can absolutely not be tracked by the NSA or 
or other entities, I wouldn't necessarily count on that. I'm not saying that they can. I'm just saying I wouldn't necessarily count on that at, at, Maybe, and again, I don't know the technical details, so I might be wrong here, but, but it is possible that the best that they're really offering here is protection from non-state actors, uh, hackers, so I don't know. But either way, it's it's a good shift in the right direction, so I'm going to put it in the, in the good news win department, and uh, I use Skype. I use Skype to do our shows is daily. And so I'll definitely, if and when, however I might be able to use that service, I'll be partaking. Hey, it doesn't hurt. It gives it another layer, makes it a little bit more difficult for whoever might be tracking whatever. And certainly the conversations that I have that are on is daily. They don't need to be encrypted, but there are conversations that have before and after the show, maybe, maybe that I'd want encrypted. Not, not that I've done anything wrong because, you know, I'm squeaky feeling, but I'll get to the next, uh, Next headline, scientists share first ever design for quantum computing chip. And so I read this article and I, I can't say I fully understand it, but this is this is my, my this is my op, my my effort to to express what I believe they're saying. So has someone cracked the theoretical code of quantum computing? A team from Australia are claiming to have done so by producing what is believed to be the world's first complete quantum computer chip design. Now, right now, it's only a design and not an actual functioning quantum computer chip. Now will come the test of the design as researchers attempt to build the newly designed chip. And this is from Walls Reap. Wall Street Pit, and I don't. I again, I'm I'm just gonna uh, read a, a a couple excerpts here. You can go to isheadlines.com and get the archive of the show to read the full excerpt, and then I encourage you to click through and read the full article to get the the full meat of what's going on here. So the new quantum computer chip design, which could pave the way towards handling millions of qubits short for quantum bits, uses on and off operations that are similar to those used to select bits in standard microprocessors. In simpler terms, the chip's design basically charts the same engineering pathway used in today's desktops, laptop PCs, or open smartphone platforms such as the iPhone to perform quantum operations. The difference, however, when it comes to the quantum operating part of the equation are qubits. Unlike a standard bit in a traditional computer, qubits, qubits, <laughs> I like qubits better. I'll go with qubits though. As super versions of bits offer exponentially more processing power. This is based on the fact that these units of quantum information can be in two spates states or spin in two directions simultaneously zero and one at any given time let's skip down a little bit our chip blueprint incorporates a new type of error correcting code designed specifically for spin qubits and involves a sophisticated protocol of operations across the millions of qubits and this this is a quote from one of the scientists who Derek guy named Zurak and Zorak also said that as they move towards the chip's initial manufacturing process, further design modifications are expected. All of the key components that are needed for quantum computing are here in one chip. Get to the next headline. Bioelectronics to break moist barrier. I got to tell you, I really enjoyed writing that title. And I know a number of you that are triggered by the word moist so that gave me a, even a little bit more joy in writing this title which i'm going to repeat because why not bioelectronics to break moist barrier so this is ostensibly a major step forward in organic electronics and this is from iScience daily so in an article in the scientific journal Advanced Materials, Simone Fabiano, 
head of a research group, which I'm not going to repeat the whole title because it's long, presents together with his colleagues results from an N-type conducting material in which the latter type structure of the polymer backbone favors ambient stability and high currents when doped. Whatever that means. One example is BBI, poly, big, long name, a material often used in solar cell research. So postdoctoral researcher Hengda Sun has found a method to create thick films of the material. The thicker the film, the greater the conductivity. We have used spray coating to produce films up to 200 millimeters thick. These can reach extremely high conductivities. I'm going to skip down here to applications of the organic components include logic circuits that can be printed on textiles or paper, various types of cheap sensor, non-rigid and flexible displays, and not least the huge field of bioelectronics. Polymers that conduct both ions and electrons are the bridge needed between the ion conducting systems in the body and the electronic components of, for example, sensors. Now, what this will essentially enable people to do is to create these uh, bioelectronic circuits in, well, in, in moist environments they won't short out so what you'll end up with is uh well, well, I, I, well let me let me quote here hey hang sun has also shown that the circuits functions for long periods of time both in the presence of auction and water he says this may appear at first glance to be a small advance in a specialized field but what is great about it is that it has major consequences for many applications we can now construct complementary logic circuits, inverters, sensors, and other components, and you electronics folks understand what he's saying, that function in moist surroundings. So this can, this can take bioelectronics where no bioelectronics has never gone before. We'll get to our next headline, which is... Turkish ships stopped by Greece caught shipping explosives to Liberty uh, to Libya, uh, not to Liberty. Definitely not to Liberty. Uh, this is from Middle East Monitor. Greek authorities have reportedly seized a ship carrying potentially explosive materials from Mersin in Turkey to Misrata in Libya. The Hellenic Coast Guard headquarters confirmed to the Libya Herald that last Saturday a Greek lifeguard guard boat detected the Andromeda ship sailing off the sea of Agios and Nicolaes near the island of Crete under a Tanzanian flag. On Monday, the Greek authorities searched the cargo of the ship and found 29 containers of explosives, detonators, and other equipment, including 11 empty liquefied petroleum gas, gas tanks. On board the ship were eight crew members, including two Ukrainians, five Indians, and and about uh, an Albania, according to the spokesman for the Greek Coast Guard, the ship record records found the vessel was supposed to be bound for Djibouti and Oman. As a result, the crew of the ship were arrested for violations of the articles of the civil code and the cargo seized. The Greek authorities also informed the competent anti-money laundering authority and the terrorism fund of the seizure of the ship. I don't know what that means. Competent? Any? Is that some sort of official coding that I'm not aware of? All right, well, we're running out of time, so let's see if I can get these last two headlines that I wanted to make sure we covered. Supermodel and Sophia, the robots targeted. Target after, well, I should say targeted, I think. Uh, okay, oh, no, no, no. Supermodel in Sophia, the robots target after tweet exchange. So this is, this is definitely going to be a Lulzilla possibility that we cover on uh, uh, Is Daily Tuesday. Definitely an, a Lulzilla contender here. Chrissy Teigen just formed a questionable friendship with Sophia the Robot. Back in December, Sophia decided to share a sort of photo of herself on Twitter where she's smiling and holding an apple. And uh, to that, Chris, Christine Teigen uh, respond. Oh, oh, well, Sophia said, can you guess which city I'm headed to now? Here's a little clue. And Christine Teigen, a supermodel and I guess known 
known Twitter troll responded, hopefully one with better makeup artists. Boom, I roasted a robot. Next level SH. So the Sophia waited a month to respond, but when she did, she said, it looks like we're both at CES. That's the uh, convention for electronics or whatever. Um, I forget what it means. It's basically, it's a big yearly electronics convention. Want to meet up and say hi? I need some makeup tips. So that could be innocuous or that could be something else. If we covered on Lolzilla with uh, Bodhi Agora and myself on uh, Is Daily Tuesday, uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun speculating. Let me get to this last headline here. Russia working on own railgun. And this is from Army Recognito. Uh, Russian scientists succeeded to manage technologies that would arm the truce with electromagnetic railguns. The United Institute of High Temperances of the Russian Academy of Sciences found a way to increase the power of the electromagnetic gun six times. The electromagnetic field accelerates the projectiles to close to space speed. I don't know what that means. Even a small object carries high destructive power. Experts believe the research of the Institute can be used to create weapons in the future. And some of the headlines uh, <coughs> that we didn't get to here are Swiss government appeals to voters to let it levy taxes. Trump administration will let states impose work requirements for Medicaid. Somaliland, women gaining independence through savings and loan schemes. China appears to have secretly sold Pakistan a large combat drone. Russia's oligarchs brace for U.S. report listing Putin friends. And there's a lot more. But to get that, you're going to have to go to isheadlines.com and you can get the latest, latest show. And that is it. That's all we have time to cover here. <coughs> I'm sorry, man. My throat is locking up at the very end. I got through all of it, and then my throat said, dude, I'm going to punch you in the throat. When your throat punches you in the throat, that's what happens. So I'm about ready to watch uh, Crypto Corner Live, which is on uh, Sovereign, the, the Sovereignty Network Facebook page. I encourage you to go there. That's Kurt Wookert Jr. I'll be heading over there as soon as I'm done with this show. And also... I will be uh, adding on to iState.tv's post for this this episode of, of Headlines You May Have Missed. I will be adding the YouTube embed, the Facebook embed. So if you're watching on YouTube, then you can, you can find also the audio uh, version of this show as well. And that's... That's it. That's all the time we have left. My name is Paul Gordon. I am with iState.tv, and you have been listening to headlines you may have missed. And I'll leave you with this. This will be my new, I think this is going to be my closing line for headlines you may have missed. I worked on it all the weekend in between football games. Remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. So when you're, when you're reading the news, bear that in mind. And we'll see you tomorrow right here at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll see you tonight for, well, we'll, we'll be maybe about 9.30. I don't know if I'll be a little late for the show tonight. Hopefully I won't, but that's uh, Is Daily Monday with Professor Rambo. we we'll talk guns on full auto. We talk world news on iWorld, and we talk prep on iPrepper. Uh, but that's scheduled for about 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you then.